this hopefully serves two purposes. Number one, helps every time you get onto the buttons and you're like, okay, this is how I do it, you sort of reinforce that skill so that when you get to the exam, you'll be like, ah, I've done this heaps and heaps of times. I remember how to get into stat mode, how to change frequency, etc. Okay? But in addition to that, there's something interesting I want to pull out from these particular sets of data, which we'll explore when we look at the numbers. So, um, it's actually very helpful that we've got them all done by individual people. Let's look at the means for each one of them, okay? When we go from here to here to here, do you notice the means are connected just like these sets of scores are connected? I've put them in order to try and make it a little more obvious. To go from set one to set two, what's the difference? Every score, yeah, every single score, if you just have all down like this, is plus two to get onto this one. Does that make sense? So therefore, if you take all the scores and you add two, that's the same as taking the mean and adding two to it. Does that make sense? Because every single one moves up, yeah? Uh, in the same way, if you have a look at 14.4, do you see 14.4? It's not a coincidence, it's exactly double 7.2, and that's because... Yeah, so you take scores, you double them, you double the mean. No surprises there. If you go over to the interquartile range, though, it's kind of similar, but kind of not. Um, do you notice the interquartile range? You need Q1 and Q3 for that, right? Now, I think it's easy when you have a look at this to see what Q2 is, the median. What, what is the median, say, for this one? Seven. It's just the middle score, right? So that is Q2, okay? Q1 and Q3 though, they're a little bit tricky and if you don't have a calculator that just hands it to you, um, it's easy to make a mistake here. What is Q1 for the first one? 5.5. It's 5.5. Now do you see why it's 5.5? What you do is you say, okay, I'm going to take this guy and forget that he exists for a moment and treat each of these guys as a separate group of scores, okay? So 5 and 6, you have to work out the meaning of this guy, which of course is five and a half. So the lower quartile is between those guys. When you think about it that way, what's the upper quartile over here? It's going to be nine. It's in between, which is why nine, take away five and a half, that gives you this. Now can someone tell me, I mean, the mean changed when I added one to everything, but the interquartile range did not change. Why not? It's the same. It's the, if you're adding the same amount of, you're adding the same amount to every score, mm -hmm. and every score's moving up by the same amount, so the gap should change. Yeah. Ah, so it's about, it's about gaps, isn't it? So do you remember, even though I sort of put all of them together, the mean is a measure of location. It's like, where's the center of this group? And 7.2 is the center. But these are not measures of location. They're not measures of the center or central tendency. What are they measures of? Do you remember what they're called? Yeah, measures of distance, the, the fancy word we usually use is spread. So how far apart are they spread out? Now, because you've moved everyone up to, they're still spread out the same amount. Does that make sense? They're just all higher. And that's why these are also the same. Do you see why the standard deviation hasn't changed? These guys are no further apart than these guys, even though these numbers are bigger. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, you can see the same thing for the last oh, score. You doubled everything, right? You doubled everything. So that does spread out everyone. Do you see what's the um, range for the first one? It's five. But the range here is 10. So everyone is spread out much more. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, last one, just down the bottom here. How high and low would scores have to be in order to be labeled outliers? Does anyone remember? Uh, let's just do this one first. How do you get high outliers? How do we work that out? be um, Q3 or Q upper. Yeah, you start with the upper quartile, <laughs> and what do you do with that? Plus 1.5 times the interquartile range. Also, you break Q2 up on the example one twice. Yeah, you're right. That's three. Thank you. So, very good. You take the upper quartile. If you know what the interquartile range is, which we do, right, you multiply that by one and a half, and then you add it. Okay, so off it goes. So, it's, it's above that by a long way. Uh, to work out this one, you do it in reverse, right? So instead of the upper quartile, I'm going to look at the lower quartile. Instead of adding, I'm going to subtract. subtract, but it's still one and a half times the interquartile range. Happy? Does that make sense?